This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Not long ago, one of the world's foremost linguistic scholars gave a list of the seven most stirring words in the English language. And he said they are, first, mother, the most revered word. Next, the most beautiful word, love. The most tragic is death. The warmest is friendship. The coldest is no. The most bitter is alone. And the saddest word in the English tongue, said this famous lexicographer, is forgotten. Consider those last two, the most bitter and the most sad, alone and forgotten. Those two words explicitly portray how multiplied millions of men and women on this planet feel about themselves, bitter and sad, alone and forgotten. And it was to such a world as this that one Jesus of Nazareth came proclaiming joy. His very birth was described as good tidings of great joy. And he once said to his apostles, as it's translated, jump for joy, for your spiritual reward will be great in living as the sons and daughters of the Most High God whom you were born to be. Wherever you are now, whatever your attitude may be, as you're listening to this radio broadcast, you got where you are and as you are, largely as the result of a series of decisions. Certainly, circumstances did play a part in it all, but even more important were the ways in which you responded to those circumstances. And from this moment on, if you will choose to, you can begin to act and react differently, to respond on a higher level to life. You can begin to seek and find and do the very will of God for you. But the choice is yours. I've talked to some students who said they felt their studies were meaningless. But in further conversation, it became clear that in fact they felt that life itself was meaningless. I've conversed with workers who declared their work to be meaningless, but who in time went on to express that they felt life itself was meaningless. So a question, how can you ever expect to find your work or your education meaningful if you find your very existence itself fundamentally meaningless? Said Socrates, the unexamined life is not worth living. Consider yourself, where you are, where you're going. And if you feel disorganized and fragmented in your purposes and motivations and ideals, bear this one truth in mind, that the very God who organized this universe can organize your life. The God whose infinite intellect and wisdom governs nebula, galaxies, and all of starry outer space. This God can govern the way you live day by day and year by year. The will of God can utterly transform you if you will seek the will of God with all your heart. And this is an urgent need upon this planet. Not long ago in New York, 120 religious leaders, philosophers, scientists, writers, and sociologists signed a document criticizing religious dogmatism. This paper, called A Humanist Manifesto, said in part, and I quote, No deity will save us. We must save ourselves. Two other quotes from this manifesto are, We believe that traditional dogmatic or authoritarian religions that place revelation, God, ritual, or creed above human needs and experiences do a disservice to the human species, and promises of immortal salvation or fear of eternal damnation are both illusory and harmful. They distract humans from present concerns, from self-actualization, and from rectifying social injustices, close quote. All right, analyze that for a moment. These authors say that placing, quote, God or revelation above human needs or experiences does a disservice to the human species. But what, I ask, if one of mankind's basic needs just happens to be for the experience of God? How else would one explain the fact that every culture around our world, according to the anthropologists, has some form of religion? God is not above our human needs. God is a profound human need, the need for a sense of orientation in this universe, 
And some of the greatest minds on this planet for centuries have acknowledged this spiritual need within themselves. But the most obtusely obnoxious and obnoxiously obtuse statement in this humanist manifesto is the one which says, quote, promises of immortal salvation or fear of eternal damnation are both illusory and harmful. They distract humans from present concerns, from self-actualization, and from rectifying social injustices. How, may I ask, can the authors of this paper hold to that position when a quick reading of the biographies of the men and women down through the centuries who've exhibited the greatest present concern for their own times and generations, who have been the most self-actualized individuals who were most committed in their quest for the righting of social injustices, have been men and women time and again who were motivated and weren't afraid to say it, who were motivated by a profound and living faith in God and who deeply believed in life after death. Study the lives, the biographies of the great reformers of this world and nine times out of ten you will discover them to have been vitally religious individuals acting out of a passionate and loving concern for their father's other children on this earth. Real religion is not just pie in the sky, by and by when you die. It is living as the transformed person you were born and intended to be, knowing God and living by the very power of his purposes in your life, a member in the worldwide brotherhood of man beneath the sovereign fatherhood of God and the discovery this God has a will for your life and a plan for this planet, and by faith you can discover it and claim it. On one occasion, the disciples came to Jesus with the question, who's really greatest in the kingdom of heaven, in this new religion you're founding? Jesus called a little child to his side and set him on his feet in the middle of them all. Believe me, he said, unless you change your whole outlook and become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It is the man who can be as humble as this little child who is greatest in the kingdom said Jesus. What are you doing with your life? What purposes do you hold for the living of your years? Recently in San Francisco, a man on the street reporter asked passers-by this very question. Are you using your time wisely? Young man attending the police academy answered, yes, I work and I go to school. I'm directed toward police work and law. A warehouseman said, no, I waste my time. But I think I'm going to change all that. I don't know how or when, but I'm going to change that, he said. I would like to use my time learning. Another warehouseman answered the question, are you using your time wisely, by saying, yes, I am. I work all the time. This man said, I have three jobs. I work from 8 to 5, then 5.30 till 1, and on weekends I work from 8 till 4 in the morning and 9 to 5 in the afternoon. That man's either going to succeed or die, die successful or die succeeding. A stock man said, I'm doing absolutely nothing with my time. I get up, he said, go to work, come home, watch TV. I'm not doing anything with my time. A gas station attendant said, I mess around a lot. I work, but afterwards I just mostly have fun. That's the best way to use your time, having fun. I fish, ski, hunt, lots of outdoor stuff, and about the only thing I'm doing that I don't like to do, he said, is working. An auto technology undergraduate said, I'm thinking of changing to the medical field. And a department store employee answered the question, are you using your time wisely by saying, I'm not sure. I work, but I guess that's the same as wasting time. I don't have any future. I don't have any future at all. I guess you could call that wasting time. Those were actual responses from people on the street as they considered the question of how wisely or unwisely they were employing the hours in their day. Twenty centuries ago, the man from whose birth we date our calendars declared that from those to whom much has been given, much will be required. You have been given 24 hours in every day. Your time is your life. What are you doing with it? Every second you waste in unproductive or uncreative lassitude is a second which is forever gone, forever unreclaimable. Through all the eons of eternity, you are only going to live this moment of your lifetime once, and that one time is now. God has a will for your life. 
But the decision to exert your energies in that is your decision and your decision alone. It will be difficult. But you possess resources which probably in all your lifetime you have never once drawn upon in full. As Marine Corps drill instructors are wont to shout out to their troops toward the end of a long march, when you think you can't take another step, take one more anyway. And thousands of men have discovered, sometimes to their own surprise, that they could. God's will for your life will likewise be the most demanding undertaking you have ever attempted, but in the attempting of it, you will begin to discover that you are possessed of potentials which for years had gone unrecognized, potentials of joy, purpose, peace, and power in your life, but above all, potentials of love, the potential to love every person you encounter during your day. Be that person young or old, rich or poor, ignorant or educated, and whatever the color of that person's skin, to love that person as a member in the spiritual family which encompasses all mankind, the universal worldwide family of God, the brotherhood of man beneath the fatherhood of God. And if that love of God becomes a recognized reality in your life, and if you begin living as the son or daughter of God you were born to be, your life and the way you live it will be tremendously transformed. But there must come about in your consciousness a passionate commitment to truth, beauty, and goodness. Millions of men and women on this planet have become bewildered by the hundreds of religious and philosophic cults, sects, schisms, and isms which characterize our time in history and have in their confusion become deeply cynical of spiritual teachings, whatever their sources. There's a bumper sticker occasionally to be seen on the backs of cars in California. It reads, don't follow me, I'm lost. And there are more than a few contemporary religious leaders who might well have that printed on their letterheads and business cards. Jesus of Nazareth once described it in this fashion, when the blind lead the blind, they both shall fall into the ditch. And any time you hear a preacher or a prophet or a mystic or savant telling you that he and he alone can get you into heaven or that God is an angry and despotic deity, or that only one race or nation of mankind is the chosen race of God, that all the rest are but insects of the earth. Anytime you hear a religionist telling you that, bear well in mind there ought to be a bumper sticker on his Bible, and it ought to read, Don't follow me, I'm lost. For all mankind are sons and daughters of one living God who loves us with a love that will not let us go. This living God loves you personally. And if you will dare to believe that, your life will never, ever be the same again. If you're interested in these topics, write to us. We want to hear from you at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, or abbreviated SRI. For those of you listening in other countries around the world, over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address. SRI, Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T, California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Seven Principles of Prayer, Life After Death, What Does Happen When You Die? If you're interested in these topics, no cost, no charge, no obligation. Nobody's going to come to your door with an attache case and try to sell you something. Simply write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute Box, 3080 Oakhurst, California, 93644, USA. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.